Ladies, it's time to have an important and an empowering discussion on a topic that affects all of us, women's hygiene. Our bodies are incredible as women and taking care of them is important to our self-care, our mental health, and just our physical overall well-being. So today we're diving into the world of women's hygiene. From menstrual care to personal grooming, we're going to explore essential tips for your hygiene to make you feel confident, comfortable, and sexy in your own skin. Sit back, relax, and grab a snack, and let's get ready to embark on a journey of self-care and discovery. Welcome to this eye-opening discussion on women's hygiene. Before we dive into the video, let's just quickly define exactly what is women's hygiene. So let's pull up Google. According to Google, women's hygiene refers to the practices and habits that women adopt to maintain cleanness, promote health, and take care of our bodies. Okay, so now we know what hygiene is, let's see how we can improve our hygiene as women. Let's get into this video. So let's talk about personal care and grooming. This one may seem obvious, but taking a bath and a shower will go a long way. Regular bathing and showering is fundamental to having good hygiene and to feeling confident and not to smell like garbage. Not only does it keep our bodies feeling clean, it also helps us feel rejuvenated and refreshed. And recently, some dermatologists actually were going viral for telling people they only needed to shower for like three days a week or three times a week. Please don't do that. Make it a habit to shower basically every day. I would, honestly, you should be showering every day, point blank period. Very easy for us to start smelling and stinking. And you don't want to be a person who stinks. There's a lot of different types of shower gels and soaps that are out there. So you have to just choose what's best for you. If you have sensitive skin, if you have dry skin, there's so many options out there. But I'm going to, of course, recommend some for you guys right now. Every product that I talk about will be linked below in the description box. One of the body washes that I really like is the Olay Cleansing and Renewing Nighttime Body Wash. This is what I am currently using right now. It's really good. I actually just got it because it was on sale. But I ended up really liking it. It's really soft on the skin. It smells really good too, so that's definitely a bonus. And it works great for sensitive skin and dry skin. It's great because it gives you a lot of moisture because it's meant for overnight. So you're supposed to, you can use it obviously in the morning too, but like if you use it at nighttime, you're gonna be refreshed and moisturized throughout the night. Another body wash is the Method Body Wash. This is the Peace, the Pure Peace one. This one smells really good too, and it's great for sensitive skin as well. And you feel moisturized right after using it, but obviously you still want to go in with moisturizer no matter how moisturizing your body wash is. Make sure you moisturize your body. And the last body wash I'm going to recommend is the CeraVe one. I don't know if I'm saying it right. CeraVe, CeraVe. I don't know how to say it. But the CeraVe, I just call it CeraVe. I'm going to put a picture so you guys are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. This one is the Salicylic Acid one, and I love Salicylic Acid. I can't even say that either. Salicylic Acid. So the CeraVe Salicylic Acid is a really great body wash if you have textured skin. I love any product that has salicylic acid in it because it's great for texture. I used to have acne, so when I had acne, I got rid of it, but I still had texture on my skin. So then I started using salicylic acid lotion from CeraVe. Girl, my skin is smooth like a baby's bottom. <laughs> any product that has salicylic acid is great for you, so I definitely recommend it because it got rid of my texture. And yeah, now we balling. Skin's clear. What you know about clear skin, I'm playing. Okay, so now let's talk about oral hygiene. Our oral hygiene is crucial for our overall hygiene and nothing is more embarrassing than having a nasty breath. In my opinion, that's my biggest fear. I hate, I mean, no, my, my first biggest fear is to smell bad, but like for my breath to smell bad, that's a whole nother. <clears throat> having a nasty breath is probably the most embarrassing thing ever. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Like imagine you're talking to someone and their breath stink. What are you gonna do? You're gonna tell them? Probably not. Nine times out of ten people do not tell people that they have a nasty breath. They just go and gossip about it later on. So you don't want to be that person who ends up being the topic of discussion because of your breath. So make sure you brush your teeth. Make sure you regularly brush your teeth, that you floss your teeth, use mouthwash, use mints and everything just to keep your breath smelling fresh. So a mouthwash that I really like to use is the Crest 3D Whitening Mouthwash. But this mouthwash is really good. Like it's not like the best one cause like, well the best, it's not the best tasting one cause I like the mint mouthwashes the best. But this one's just really good for like giving you like a whiter smile. It's not, doesn't give you a super white smile, but like I definitely do feel like my teeth is whiter when I use it. However, if you engage in practices that do not allow you to have white teeth, 
don't expect to get super crystal clean white teeth. And I'm talking to you coffee, you coffee drinkers. If you keep brushing your teeth and using this mouthwash over time, you can get some nice teeth and you can have some nice breath, period. I also like the Arm & Hammer Advanced Toothpaste. That's another really good one too, to give you some white, pearly white teeth. I always feel super clean, my mouth feels super clean whenever I use it, so it's definitely one of my favorites. And it helps with white teeth. And who doesn't like white teeth? If you don't like white teeth, then you probably stink. Your breath, your breath probably stinks. Also, another tip is to be changing your toothbrush every three months. Toothbrush is only good for so long. I know some people who be keeping a toothbrush for years, and I'm like, that's, that's nasty. So don't keep a toothbrush for a year. After three months, change your toothbrush. And another tip for good breath is peppermint tea actually. Peppermint tea has a lot of great benefits but another great benefit is that it helps you with stanky breath. If you have bad breath I definitely recommend drinking peppermint tea black maybe in the morning, night, whenever. I personally have it in the morning and sometimes at night time but if I know like I'm going out and like I have to and I have to have extra good breath I definitely drink a cup of peppermint tea you know if you're going on a date or something like you don't want to have stanky breath. So I definitely recommend it. Okay, so now let's move on from oral hygiene to intimate care hygiene. Caring for our intimate areas is so important and it's vital to avoid infections, just to feel clean, and just also to feel confident in our skin. Always remember to wash your genital area with clean, plain water. You can use washes as well that are specifically designed for intimate areas. Like you should not be using what you use on your face or your body to clean your intimate areas. No, because it's two different, it's, they're two different things, they require different things, so don't, don't try to mix them all together. You want to avoid douching and hard soaps and just scented soaps down there. You do not need anything that's scented to go down there. Leave your girl alone. Like, she'd be minding her business, she'd be doing her thing. Leave her alone, let her live. You don't need to douse her with like freaking peppermint scented like body washes. You just don't need to do that. I know people try to be like, yeah, you have to smell good. I don't want her to smell like, I want my girl to smell good down there. Da, 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 da. That's very much outdated. We know that you're not supposed to smell like roses. It's supposed to smell like a normal vagina. So let it, let her do her thing. Overall, society does really brainwash us that we have to smell so good down there. Like obviously you don't want to stink down there, but you don't need to smell like roses or flowers down there because it's just not healthy. So you don't really need washes for down there but i will still recommend in case you just want to at least have it because there's definitely some good products you want to use down there too for example vagisil you guys have probably heard of them if you haven't that's okay they're a really popular brand and like i think they're probably the only brand that i know that sells like intimate area intimate area washes and like care there's definitely more out there but they're like the most known and the most popular so i like the vagisil odor blocking wash i think that's what it's called this one's really good for order odor if you kind of smell down there like, let's say like you're smelling more than usual maybe you're on your period so you're smelling down there you can use this to help prevent the smell like from getting too crazy and just doing too much so definitely it's great if you just want to have something that's gentle and it's perfect it's not it's not harsh and they also have the odor controlling deodorant no yeah it's the odor controlling deodorant powder i really like that one too it's great if you kind of sweat a lot down there like it just helps with that also it helps with smell as well because any like powder substance like baby powder is a great smell so since it's like a powdery like baby powder smell it's the smell is so good so like you will literally smell amazing but obviously it's powder so like you're gonna have it's gonna like it's gonna be white on you. Like, you guys know what powder is. I'm, I'm sure you know what it is. <laughs> Vagisil also has great pH products. If you feel like your pH is unbalanced, it's just not, it's not doing its thing. They have a pH balanced wash. I'm gonna obviously show the picture because I don't remember the exact name. They have a lot of great pH balanced products. So I definitely, definitely recommend if you feel like your pH is off. Another way to care for your intimate areas is to use the wiping technique. If you haven't heard of the wiping technique, I am here to show you exactly what it is. Well, not show you, I'm gonna tell you because if I show you, I, I would get blocked off of YouTube. So I'm going to tell you what this technique is. So basically what you wanna do when you're done using the washroom, you want to wipe from the front to the back because you don't want to do the back to the front because you're going to take all of your like bacteria that's in your booty to your to your vagina and you do not want to do that. It's always front to back. That's just a simple technique you can implement. You can start implementing that today to keep your girl happy and keep back there, you know, you let back there do its thing. But this will reduce the risk of infections like UTIs and everything. So because you just don't want to deal with that. So 
front to back every time. Every time, man. Also, understanding your vaginal discharge is another important way you can always have your hygiene on point. Vaginal discharge is very much, it's a normal thing. It happens to everyone and it's its a natural process. So it's bound to happen regardless because it maintains the health of your vaginal area. So whenever you have vaginal discharge, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not anything crazy. It's just your body caring for your vagina and it's a normal process. However, it's gonna obviously stay in your underwear, so you wanna make sure you wear liners. If, if you're noticing that it's happening a lot, maybe just put a liner there on your underwear so you don't have to worry about it staining the underwear. And speaking of liners, it's a perfect segue into our next topic, which is menstrual health. So one of your first steps to improving your hygiene during your menstrual period, menstrual period. Girl. So one of the first steps in your menstrual hygiene is to choose the right menstrual products for you. Because there's so many options out there, girl, like there's so many things you can choose from. So it's, it's great that you have such a wide selection. However, having a wide selection can kind of confuse you. You don't know what to buy, you don't know what's good because there's just so much things out there. So take the time to just try different products out, see what works for you, maybe search online what other people are using. But of course, I'm gonna still share, share with you guys some products that you can use. Personally, I find pads the easiest to use and I think that's probably one of the most popular options for women out there. It's just really simple. You put on your underwear and you go. So Kotex actually has really good pads. These pads have charcoal in them so it reduces the smell of period. Cause you know, sometimes when you're on your period, depends, obviously it's different for everyone, but when you're on your period, you open your legs or just like bend down and you can smell like the period blood. It's like, mm. Basically they use plant-based charcoal in their pads and this helps to stop odor. But in the end of the day you really shouldn't have to spend a lot of money on pads i know there's a push to make menstrual products free scotland's the first country to offer free menstrual products which is amazing i hope that other countries follow suit but it's also capitalism consumerism so i feel like we're not gonna get menstrual products for free but, but at least for a long time like maybe in the future but right now i don't see that happening because periods are a natural thing why do we have to pay to like deal with them, you know what I mean? Also, the next popular thing is tampons. Tampons are really popular among a lot of people who like maybe exercise a lot and just go swimming and all that because you can't wear a pad to swim. Personally, I find it too much work. It just seems like too much. I just don't have time to put on a tampon. Latex actually has really good tampons. And the price point is not too bad, so I definitely recommend it. And it's like, this is a, it's a popular brand. A lot of people use it. Okay, so now you've chosen your pad or you've chosen your menstrual product that works for you. You need to know how to properly dispose of these products and how to actually use them. So always follow the manufacturer's directions so you don't get your leg amputated. I'm joking. <laughs> Obviously change your pads and tampons regularly to avoid discomfort, smell, and infections. You do not want any of that. I think if you go on Google, it recommends like four to every four to six hours to change your pad and tampon. I would say every two to three hours, just to be on the safe side. And also just make sure that you're not flushing down your menstrual products down a toilet. Wrap it properly and put it in the garbage and just dispose of it properly because you just do not want to be clogging toilets, okay? Okay, also you wanna make sure that you're staying prepared. Always bring an extra bag with some extra menstrual products like pads, tampons, extra underwear, some wipes and everything. Cause nothing is worse than getting your period when you're out and about and you did not expect it. Cause girl, let me tell you a story. So it was my friend's birthday and you know, it was a great, we went to this really nice bougie restaurant. I was looking cute and everything. I was on point. My dress was on point, you know, period. I was eating a lot of food like the day before. So when I'm eating a lot, I know I'm about to get my period. But my dumb ass was like, you know what? I feel like it's not today, like, you know? And plus I wanted to carry my really cute mini bag. Like it's like, it's like that really cute bag that can only fit your phone inside. I cannot fit a pad inside it. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just not gonna bring a pad. And guess what happened? I got my period. That was really annoying and it stained my dress. Like, oh my God, like the stains out now and everything. But like, it was just so annoying. Cause I was like, bro, like why, why me? I was walking out of the restaurant with the freaking blood stained dress. Like it was not cute. I recommend to always stay on top of your ish. Definitely be careful. Okay, now we're talking about my favorite topic ever and it's perfume, deodorant, and just smelling good i have to always smell good when i go out i will go broke buying perfume because i don't like to smell bad but using deodorant helps you control your body odor and it leaves you feeling fresh all day but adding your favorite perfume or body mist also helps with your overall smell and scent and confidence so let's get into how we can smell good all day 
Okay, so what is deodorant? Deodorant is a personal care product that's meant to help you control your odor. So it works by neutralizing or masking the odor produced by the bacterial breakdown of sweat in the underarm area. Deodorants come in various forms, including roll-ons, sticks, sprays, and actually creams too. So for optimal effectiveness, you want to be applying deodorant to clean dry skin. If your underarm is damp and sweaty, you're gonna not have a great effect with the deodorant because you want your skin to be clean and dry because that's going to make the deodorant last longer. Also reapply the deodorant all day as you need to. Everyone's different. Some people sweat more than others. So if you are a person who sweats more, you definitely want to keep applying deodorant throughout the day. I'm lucky I don't really be sweating like that. Even when I go to the gym, I don't sweat like that. I don't need to wear, I mean, I wear deodorant, don't get me wrong, but I don't have to keep reapplying. If you if you stink a little bit, make sure you reapply your deodorant. But also you don't want to apply too much deodorant because applying too much causes buildup and it's just counterproductive. My favorite deodorant of all time, the only deodorant that I use is any deodorant that is baby powder. Baby powder is a really great scent because it lasts all day. It's very strong and it just smells amazing. But there's a lot of options out there so you can definitely check them out. But Lady Speed Stick and Secret are the ones that come to my mind first. So now we're gonna talk about perfume. The difference between perfume and deodorant is that deodorant actually controls your body odor while perfume does not control your body odor. So if you stink and you put on perfume, you're still gonna stink, period. Now people just think, oh, I'm gonna just spray some perfume and I'm gonna be good. Like, no, take a shower, wear deodorant, and then put your perfume on and then you're gonna smell good. So perfumes just enhance your overall smell. So definitely, if you want to enhance your smell, then perfumes are for you. Here are some tips on using some perfume. You wanna find your signature scent. Find a perfume that complements your natural body chemistry and that can become your signature scent. Don't limit yourself to one perfume at the beginning. Just try a lot of different ones and then you'll find out what works for you. Also, you wanna make sure you're applying your perfume to your pulse points. Your pulse points emit heat, which makes the fragrance last longer throughout the day. Pulse points are behind your ear, so here, Actually, I'll show you. So I'll show you with this perfume. So your pulse points are behind your ear and your wrist helps you smell good. Also, your neck is a really important one too. You want to spray there, there. And to increase the longevity of your perfume, you want to definitely reapply it throughout the day because perfume can act like a fool and last for like two seconds. But we don't want that. We want perfume that lasts a long time. What I like to use is a combination of different things to make my perfume last longer. So first, what I like to use is Baby Gel by Johnson's. If it's here, I'll actually show you guys. So I like to use this Baby Gel by Johnson's. It's really great for if you have like dry skin or just if you want your skin to shine and stuff, this is what I use. But anyways, I use this first on my skin and then I'll go in with my perfume and put it on top because it's like a sticky, it's not a sticky gel, but like it, the smell of the baby gel is already really good so if you mix it with perfume it smells even better and it makes it last even longer. So I put my baby gel, I put my perfume and then I go with the roller blade and then you just kind of roll it in and it makes it last even longer. So my favorite perfume to use and what I like to, I like to mix my perfume as well. So I love Black Opium by YSL. I like to use that and I mix it with Alien by Mugler. That, those two scents together are on point. I get so many compliments when I wear it so I definitely Definitely love it. So I'd recommend, like, if you want to smell good, period. Obviously, these are designer perfumes, so they're a little bit expensive. Not a little, but they are expensive. YSL Libra is a really good perfume, too. I use the original one. I know they have different options. But another option that is good, it's more affordable, is FC, 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 <laughs> I'm having such different, FC UK. So it's supposed to smell, spell another word that I'm not gonna say. It's actually right here, too. I like this one a lot. It smells really good too. Another shout out, another great perfume is Good Girl or Bad, it's called Good Girl I think. Good Girl, Bad Girl by Caroline Herrera. Don't know how to say her name. There's a lot of perfumes to choose from and there's so many good options so definitely take your time and try to find what works for you. They're expensive but I feel like it's worth it just to have at least one good perfume in your collection so you're Gucci and you're always like 
ready to take on the day and smell like a smell like a baddie. Overall, I hope that you guys found this video very helpful. By incorporating these tips and products into your hygiene routine, you will see a huge difference. Trust me, you will smell good. And yeah, I just want you guys to feel more confident and empowered when you're making decisions on buying hygiene products and just in your overall hygiene routine. Remember, taking care of yourself is an act of self-love. So if you found this information helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. I would love to know if I helped you guys out and share it with your friends. Maybe they need some help. Maybe they stink and you want to help them smell better. And I appreciate you sticking around till the end. It means a lot. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.